اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته welcome to this final episode of this let's recite series during shah ramadan now some of you may be happy some of you may be sad but this is the last time you'll see my face during this month um and um, it has been an amazing journey and what amazing guests that we've had uh, who've been able to share their stories with us and um, really i personally have learned a lot and i hope this series has has uh, done its bit to uh, to help us all learn uh, about people and and the quran their journey with the quran and uh, each of these uh, guests of mine have been so inspirational and I've, i personally have been inspired with their stories and what they've gone through to be able to achieve um, their relationship with the quran and inshallah i mean the, the idea was to get different guests from our community and beyond um who've had different uh, journeys with the quran and and who've come from different walks of life just so that we could we could uh, pick on uh, and and re- we could resonate with at least one or two of the stories uh, so that we can be inspired with their stories and be able to uh i- improve our relationship with the quran and take it to that next level really i mean we've had um ter- beautiful tartil recitations we've had beautiful mujawwad recitation um we've had um uh, people who who've done amazingly well with memorization of of the holy quran um and and also we've spoken about the importance of not only reciting but going through the meaning of the quran because ultimately uh, the holy quran was sent as a book of guidance so taking to that next level so that we can uh, learn from the quran and implement it in our lives we we learned so many different tips we learned tips on how to uh hold our breath and be able to increase our breath we learned from jamil's beautiful story um on on the hardships that he's gone through in a very young tender age and how he's been able to blossom with his quran journey and and do amazing stuff with the quran to be able to really memorize so many surahs that i personally would would just dream of being able to memorize and he's been able to do it at the young age of 10 um and given his his uh his issues with his health is just so inspirational it's just let me let me to think that i have no excuse whatsoever alhamdulillah alhamdulillah allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed me uh, with uh, with everything so i have no excuse not to be able to have that relationship with the quran uh then we also had um um uh, makbul uncle uh, rahim and um, ali murtaza bandali showing us the passion and the drive for the quran throughout from from when they were young all the way till to where they are now and 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 the the main lesson being that it's never it's never too late to start it's never too late to push on um and uh, and you can always have this energy regardless of your age and uh, then also we we learned you you notice from all these all these videos and all the interviews the value of listening not only listening but active listening i think each and every uh, guest on the show um said mentioned the value of listening and this is an important thing that i i always tell my students and i always tell people that as important as it is to recite it's important to listen and uh, and the the formula that i use is the three step formula uh, that really helps me personally when i want to uh, learn something new or when it's been to to uh, improve my maharaj or my tajweed rules um and this is the three step formula step number 1 pick your reciter pick your verse and listen to the reciter actively listen open the quran while he's reciting just take it in and um and recite and follow him in your mind just so that you can pick up the maharij you can pick up the tajweed rules and then you can pick up the tune as well uh, yes it's good to uh, listen all the time while going to sleep while doing your chores or while doing anything but actively listening is very very important then step number 2 you you take the same passage again and uh you take verse by verse or so if the verse is long then short snippets of the verse you actively listen pause and then you recite trying to copy exactly how the qari has recited now we mentioned quite a few qura during the show we've mentioned the likes of um, uh, mr rashid al afasi um muhammad siddiq minshawi 
Um, we have the likes of uh, Ra'd al-Kurdi, who is a personal favorite of mine, of ha or Haza Balushi. So you pick these reciters and just keep on listening to them, just so that you can take them in. And then the third step, the third step after you've done those two uh, first two steps is that you recite that same passage again. But this time, take all those shackles off. Implement what you've learned in the terms of Makharij, the Tajweed rules, and then, and then recite with a tune. Try and recite with the same tune as well. And that, that works wonders from day one. But obviously, it's a long journey, but you'll see yourself improve gradually. So actively listening, that's what we learn. And also, um, we had a couple of brilliant uh, videos on the parent uh, uh, parent child relationship with the Quran and how the parent was trying to uh, uh, improve their own Quran so that they can pass it down to their, to their children and how the children was perceiving that from the, the parent and being able to put that into action. So that I think there was a lot to learn, especially for me being a young uh, parent, um, on how to uh, be able to in, in, implement that love for the Quran uh, within, within the children. So that was beautiful to see. Um, I have Try to give highlights, but I think let's have a look at uh, a few of the highlights from from the show. I remember when I was when I was really young, um, come rain, come shine, every night um, as I was going to sleep, uh, my father would sit and, and recite uh, two surahs from the Holy Quran: Surah Jum'a and Surah A'la. So, I think for me, it definitely um, started at home. I think um, from. My, some of my earliest memories are sitting at home um, reciting Quran, whether it's on the breakfast table or on the dinner table, you know, in the morning or in the evening. It's probably about 11 or 12 years old, we were reading the Yassarna Quran, which was uh, <laughs> yeah. something that was uh, across all the households. And uh, we were going to Sikina Anti Dala's place. Mm. So about 10 minutes, 10, 15 minutes from home and after school without, uh, you know, no choice. We had to, we were walk to Sikinanti's place and even just talking about it, it brings out these memories. Um, well, I have to say, Alhamdulillah, I've been, I've been blessed with, with some incredible teachers. Um, and of course, parents who really drove us to, to sit with these teachers and enjoy the Quran. It's the fact that people um, really pay attention to it and that they love it and support something like that, you know, it's mm -hmm. they all especially my family used to say instead of listening to music you could do this yeah. you know get thawab and also do something you enjoy by using yeah. your voice yeah i think i introduced quran to my children both my boys before they were born so okay. that was part of me when i was expecting them and we we usually hear that babies can hear us yeah so that as soon as i was pregnant with him that was part of my life but then he's uh, and even when they were born, we tend to recite Quran, but I had the habit of not doing it quietly. I had the habit of doing it loud out so they could hear me even when they were babies. So I think they always heard me do that, putting them to sleep, feeding them. Initially, it started off as uh, just that my children should be able to recite well. A lot of people do say that competitions, Quran should not be about competition. But actually for me, I feel like that was one of my main motivations, to be honest. I'm very competitive by nature. And so that pushed me a lot to perfect my recitation and to learn more about it. You know, a lot of my friends have pushed me further to mm. explore my relationship with Quran and Quran recitation. Yeah. Whatever it is, it's, it's about finding some way of connecting. I started to really enjoy their recitations. Um, and the likes of people like Malim Murtada Bandali, of course, um, Brother Hasnain Juma, people like this, um, you know, they used to recite like this in the masjid. Um, and it was really an inspiration for me. Uh, so I used to try and listen to that a lot more. And I always have linked mm. my love for recitation uh, of du'as, mm. my love for listening to du'as, my love for doing azan, for example, my love for doing uh, recitations generally with uh, the love for Qur'an. There was maybe three cassettes on Abdul Basid and about three, four cassettes on Mahmoud Tablawi. Okay. And that's all I had. Classical recitals. There was no, there was no YouTube, there was radio, <laughs> there was TV and there was that. Mm. I listened to those cassettes on and 
And they, so literally, those were my first initial influence. Recitation of the Holy Quran was actually, uh, in my life, initiated when uh, my beloved mother requested me that, uh, Sayyid Jalal, I want you to be like a reciter who was famous in Afghanistan at that time. So that was in my mind always that I have to fulfill the will of my mother. Quran. Uh, decorate Quran with your good voices and uh, those were the probably it is true as you listen literally you get that kind of uh, uh, drawn to that uh, yeah. those beautiful voices and Very this true. is uh, probably how it, it captured my attention in the, and I got uh, sort of hooked Look. to, to, mm. to, to, to Quran <laughs> So that was amazing. It was really, really nice to see uh, back all uh, all the guests on the show, and it just brought back amazing uh, memories of of my conversations with them. Now, what I want to do is l literally summarize the the things that we've learned uh, over this series, uh, just so that yes, we we've, we've learned the journey and we've been inspired, but also we need to learn about the Quran and uh, know how to improve our recitation with the Quran. So just a few snippets uh, and points on what we've learned during the series and inshallah we can take it from there. So the first thing that we learned was the uh, difference between short vowels and long vowels. So short vowels are the Fatha, Kasra, Dhamma. Long vowels are the two uh, counts of each of these Fatha, Kasra, Dhamma. So we know if there's an Alif that appears after a Fatha, then we pull that two count. If there's a Ya that appears after a Kasra, then we pull that two count. And finally, if there's a wow that appears after a dhamma, then we pull that by two counts. The second thing that we also mentioned was the, was the makharij of various letters. But typically, we, we, a lot of us struggle with the throat letters. So what are the throat letters? So from the bottom part of the throat, we have alif hamza, uh, one and the same, and you have ha. So this ha, we said, was like the English equivalent of the letter h. We don't put any emphasis on it, just like he's reciting the Quran, Bismillahi, Allahu, that is the ha from the bottom part of the throat. Then we go to the middle part of the throat where we're capturing the air in the middle part of the throat and releasing. So what are these letters? We have ha and ra. So these, these are the ones that you put a bit more emphasis on and uh, to pronounce. So Bismillahi, rah, Rahman and Rahim, that's from the middle part of the throat. Or A'udhu, Ain. Ain, Alameen, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. That's from the middle part of the throat. We need to put a bit more emphasis. Then you have the, the top part of the throat where you have the letter Kh and the letter Gh. Now you're scraping. These are the scraping letters. You're scraping the top part of your throat. Kh and Gh. And Salmanti said something uh, uh, interesting, which, which I learned was, how do you differentiate between Gh and Kh? And she said, the way she explains it is, but you open the gate, g -g -g. whereas if, you're, if you've got a bit of, when you've got a sore throat or something, you scrape the throat, g -g. that's the letter g -g. So that's the way to differentiate between those two. Um, I, I won't go into much detail, just because I'm just summarizing. Uh, we've gone through it already. And if you need more help or more classes, you feel free to approach Darul Quran or, or the uh, Jamaat and they'll be more than happy to guide you to the uh, relevant places. Um, I also run uh, an, an online Facebook group called the Quran Academy where we're having live lessons and I'm posting regular videos on there. So feel free to join the Quran Academy and uh, we'll be more than happy to see you there. And finally, we have Ikhfa as well, where you're uh, applying some ghunna uh, and uh, stretching on those on those letters. So, yeah, that's that in summary is what we went through, uh, as well as the journey of everyone's uh, uh, Quran journey. Uh, so, um, shall we be inspired by the stories and we can all improve our relationship with the Quran. And I'd just like to end with thanking firstly all the participants uh, who agreed to take time. Uh, I know the conversations were long, so uh, thank you so much for taking your time out of your busy schedules to, to really talk about your journeys and um, and uh, inspire us all. Inshallah, your ajr is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I'd like to thank all, all of the viewers for, for your time as well. Um, I'm sure you're you're now tired of seeing my face for all, all 
old days of Shah Ramadan. So I'll give you all a break uh, for now. Uh, and I'd also like to thank all of uh, all of the well wishes who sent me messages and feedback, um, uh, constructive feedback. It's it's been really really helpful uh, in making this series. And uh, without all of your support and your duas, this would have not been uh, possible at all. So with that, I leave you. Just remember us in your duas with these last few nights of Shah Ramadan. And yeah, please pray for us and to give us uh, that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala gives us the tawfiq to really take his book um, and, and hold it in high regard and re be able to build that key relationship with the Quran, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.